Hey, Hero fans, this is Todd. So today, we're going to talk about Triclops. He just can't wait to get into action, it looks like. So, let's go ahead and start with the original Triclops. Now, this right here is actually a commemorative one, but it kind of has the same exact one as the old, old one. One thing about the original one is the face. The face actually had, like, three different frowns, and each one a little more than the last. And so you would see, like, this... Uh, Really weird looking mouth on the original where it's kind of get lower and lower. Now when I used to use this Triclops, I used to give him this weapon here. So as he's standing next to Skeletor's throne, he could kind of defend him. And I would give uh, Faker um, the one from uh, Castle Grayskull. But normally, this is his normal weapon. It's this sword right here that just pulls out, goes in his hand. And how cool is that? He actually has a place to store it. We all kind of wished He-Man had that storage spot when we were kids. So it's kind of cool that they gave that to us with Triclops. Now, I believe Triclops originally was going to be a heroic figure. You can tell because he has a heroic feet and the heroic arms, as opposed to the way Skeletor and um, Merman and Zodak looks, where uh, he was supposed to be the heroic side, but they decided to uh, even up the factions and they made him an evil, evil warrior for Skeletor. Now, what's kind of cool, too, is he actually had paint on his cuffs. As we saw with the original He-Man, they didn't. It was just skin color. So some people would take and swap these arms out and put them on their He-Man so their He-Man would have colored cuffs. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Oh, and he has three eyes. Woo! And you can put it on, of course, his blue eye, which I have to like was his night vision, so you can see in the dark because it's blue. And then he'd have his um, regular average red eye, and uh, which I'd pretend would, would be something else, you know, like maybe see through objects or something. Then he had his red eye, which I pretended like was his blast eye, where he would shoot people. <laughs> But uh, the idea is he could see from all three directions at once. So as bad guys came up, he could see them without actually turning his head. And all three cameras, or all three eyes, would see um, their special ability from whatever eye it's in. Now his main focus, he'd rotate towards the front. And that, of course, would be um, the way you do it. Now what's interesting is, if you look at each eye, each eye is almost like how angry he is. And that was kind of interesting as a kid. It almost shows his, like, oh, I'm really mad now, as opposed to, like, eh. Um, whatever happens, whatever happens, right? So that's kind of kind of funny the way that kind of looks with his eyes like that. Now, later on, we got the 2000X. Here's our 2000X one. And the 2000X has two action features. One action feature they have is a button on the back. And when you press the button, his arm would move down. And what that was for was you put his sword in his hand, and it's kind of cool. This sword is like a two-handed sword. You can see it's like a broadsword or something. Now, the bad part is his swords were so thin that they would get all flopsy and mopsy and bend very easily. So that kind of stinks. But if you rose the arm a little bit, and now you use that action feature, now he could attack with uh, that action feature. Of course, you have to click, do a couple clicks to get it up a little higher so it would work. Now, he has one hand that's up all the time. So the best way to put this in his shape would be to rotate him this way a little bit, his one leg out, and then uh, you can put the arm out a little bit, turn his head, then he was kind of ready for battle now to fight whoever he was going against. So that's kind of the way you'd put him in position in order to uh, fight. Now, what kind of stinks about this with his leg being bent is you're kind of stuck in a certain pose. And uh, I'd... I, not a fan of action figures that have legs stuck like that. Like the old McFarlane figures had that a lot, where they only had certain poses that would work just because of the way their legs or arms were shaped. All right, so the other feature of this 2000X figure is on the top of his head is a small little clear area, and the idea is when you cover his eye, um, you can release it and it shows some light. Let me get a flashlight to show you kind of what this looks like. So you can kind of see how it looks like it lights up. Now, the first time I ever saw this was when I was a kid. I had a G.I. Joe. And the G.I. Joe, you would take in, um, it was uh, Action Man. And you would take in, you would, uh, not Action Man. Uh, oh, what was his name? Anyway, um, he was kind of like the Bionic Man version for G.I. Joe. Atomic Man, there you go. And what you would do is you would take in, you would cover his um, eyepiece over and over again from the top of his head so he could do Morse code to signal other Joes. And it was kind of a cool feature. So, of course, I had to see how it worked. So I ripped his head off, looked inside, and saw the little plastic piece going in there. Then later on, I learned about fiber optics. And so my kids, we were at Toys R Us one time. They saw the same thing with a Jawa action figure. Where it had, like, the burgundy, um, kind of a darker color up here. When you uh, had the light on top, 
the burgundy would light up in front and make his eye like it was lit up. And uh, so, of course, I told them all about it and fiber optics and how it all worked. And they're like, yeah, whatever, Dad. Just get us the figure. And I said, hey, hey, for, for that attitude, no figure for you. So what's fun about this is you can get some laser pointers. And I got these three assorted laser pointers in three different colors. So I have my, uh, my red, my uh, green, and my kind of bluish purple. And what's fun about this is... Uh, is you can take and use a laser pointer to really light that up. And that's just makes it look really cool. Like his eye is just blasting people left and right. And of course, let's go ahead and do the green one. There we go. And the green just really lights up super bright. So now he's like, and a beatable force of Triclops. Anyway, and last we have the bluish purple. It's not quite as bright. Line that right up there. And you can see how that kind of looks. And you can, you can actually get these in a three set. I might post a link in the comments so you can get your own laser pointers. But those were two action figures, features. His chopping hand and his light up helmet. He also came with a Doom Seeker, which we saw in the cartoon quite often that He-Man would take and crush the Doom Seeker on the front and smash it, and he could actually see through the Doom Seekers as well. So not only did he have the ability to uh, um, see the special things with his eyes, but then also his Doom Seeker could fly off and he could see that as well. And then Skeletor could also use the Doom Seekers to see what's going on too, which I thought was kind of interesting because usually we see him use his magic for that. All right, so next... We had the classics. The classics are pretty cool. Now, there are not a lot of action features in this. He does have the spinning head, which was kind of hard to get spinning sometimes. He came with one sword, not two. He also has a spot to store his sword and back. And he has these three daggers that are attached that you cannot remove. Now, um, he does have all kinds of articulation, which made this figure really cool. And in his eyes, he has a little bit of an indent. So if you find pieces, like put on the green eye, for instance, and I cut this off one of the other figures, and you can take and put this in the eye socket, and it looks like he's blasting something. Boo! Or you can put it on blue, and uh, let's see here. I got this uh, Luke Skywalker here. Hey, I'm Luke. You pull that off and jam that in his eye, and there you got a blue laser shooting out from his eye. Uh, I, instead of Luke using a lightsaber and I imagine if you had a Darth Vader you could do the same thing now I do have a Darth Vader but I'm not going to open them for this video you can see the lightsaber is a little bigger than Luke's but this hole is also a little bigger so I'm sure it will fit in fact Luke's fit fits in the red one backwards into that spot so there you go some cool new features that you can do with your toy you may not have known already all right, let's put Luke Skywalker's lightsaber back together. There we go. All right, so this is one of my customs I made. And uh, I was trying to go for the comic aesthetic. Not exactly, but just trying to get a little closer. And I kind of liked how this looked with a samurai kind of feel. So I gave him um, samurai He-Man sword. And because uh, of the loose ankles, I got to keep him on this. Otherwise, he'll just fall over. I mean, he'll stand for a little bit, but he kept falling over when I was getting ready for the video. I guess there we go. He's standing now. And uh, let's see if the sword fits in his back. Oh, there's no back. Ah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so let's take a look at the mini comic that, that the original one came with so you guys can see what he looked like. And you can kind of see the style with a lighter green and just did not quite match what we were looking for in our figure. Because you, you can see he looks quite different than the actual original released figure. And this is one of my favorite comics when I was younger. I used to always play out this scene right here where it shows He-Man and Tila and Ram Man sitting around just, just relaxing. And then all of a sudden, Triclops comes into the mix and takes out Battle Cat first. Now, this big old blast behind there, I always figured he used his blast eye at the same time, and that's what really knocked him out. Because just a punch from a guy on a giant tiger would not be that powerful. So I always feel like this is like a big old boosh! blast you know and um blasted battle cat to knock him out and so it's it's kind of kind of cool and you can see you know him fighting he-man in this and it's amazing how well he stands up against he-man alone 
It's kind of cool. And there he does do his blinded light again. Boom! Blinds He-Man and he can't see. And now Tri and Triclops has the upper hand. And then He-Man all of a sudden punches him and whammo bammo. And uh, that's pretty much about it. And from that point forward, he becomes Skeletor's lackey. And from what I understand, once you become Skeletor's lackey, lackey it's this rule this guy posted on my videos. And I love it. It's called the... The ninja rule. If you have one ninja, they can kick rear over the place. If you got lots of ninjas, they become fodder. And it's like, you know what? That happens in movies all the time. So when you got this, um, whoops, when you got uh, this one here, he also came with a Doom Seeker as well. And this Doom Seeker kind of looks a lot like the Wind Raider. It has kind of the orange features and stuff. That was kind of cool that the Four Horsemen did that to kind of look like a Wind Raider. Kind of a fun thing. Now, I like to imagine that when he uses this, it takes the place of one of his eyes. So if he's using this and it's flying around, one of his eyes is now seeing this instead of that. So, of course, I wanted to make sure I had three. So technically, he could have one for each eye. And at that point, he would actually be blind where he's at. But then his Doom Seekers could see wherever they fly off to. So... That was kind of always my thought process. Now, I've often always wondered how this kind of worked. If you look under his helmet, you can kind of see he has like virtual glasses on. That's what it looks like. And even when I was a kid, I've often wondered how this worked. And I used to imagine he had like three screens inside his head. That was kind of like a wide screen, if you will. So he just got used to knowing the screen on this side was this eye and the screen on this side was this eye. So he still only see what we see forward, but it's just more compressed with the three screens to show a more wraparound view. So that's what I used to always imagine as a kid, that he had like this cool tech hardware that would allow him to uh, see inside there. So let's go ahead and move on to Filmation. Here is our Super 7 Filmation. Now before I jump into the figure, let's watch a small quick clip on the Filmation figure. I just happen to have it spooled up right here. And you can see when he first, uh, oh, let's hit play. There we go. When he first comes into the scene, he's got these different shaped eyes, which is kind of interesting. And one of the eyes can see through objects, his gamma vision. And so you can see him using his Gamma Vision to find that, and then, of course, Skeletor calls him there and takes his weapon with him that he found. That's kind of cool. And look how close he looks here to He-Man. I mean, the colors are almost the same. The same orange belt, the same brown orangish pants, and the same color wrist cuffs. The only difference is, is the boots. His boots don't have the furry outside like uh, He-Man has on his boots. So when I first saw this particular figure... I got kind of excited because the Filmation um, uh, He-Man figures were getting so expensive. I thought, you know what? I could just use this as a Filmation He-Man. Just swap out the armor and I'd be set. Well, the bad part is, is uh, right there you can see they made a different uh, uh, body for him. And they glued the armor on. He's got this little square right on his back. You have to sand down first. And it goes into this square right here. And when you put it in the right spot, his armor is kind of bunched up on his back and pulls up on, like a half shirt on his front. So you have to break that glue first, slide the armor forward, and then keep going. Another thing I want you to notice is look at the green color difference. His green is like this super bright fluorescent green, while in the cartoon, it's more of a greener, darker green. And so a lot of people complained about the green not matching correctly. Um... Super 7 told us that this is the actual color they used. It's just because of TVs back in the day. That's why it looks darker green. Okay, maybe. But even if that's true, we remember the dark green. So sell us the dark green, not the one that matches the thing that nobody ever saw because we didn't have that. Now, it's also interesting. He only has three dots instead of all the way around like we usually see with He-Man. So, unfortunately, you cannot use this to make a He-Man very easily because of the bump on the back. And the boots don't match, but, I mean, you could, I guess. Now, at first, his head did not turn very easily. In fact, it was kind of glued in place from the paint. So, Super 7 eventually said, you know, you're right. There is a problem with it. So, they sent out an extra head in this envelope right here that you would get. Now, I didn't open this to see what it looks like. I imagine it's the same head. 
But it stinks is I bought three of these and I had three subscriptions at the time. They only sent me one extra head. I kind of wanted to have more than one so I could open it up and check it out. Now, the fun thing is, look, it has a little eye right there for attention because it's for Triclops. So that was kind of clever. But I did not open immediately like it says. So there you go. So when it comes to uh, Mattel and their different things they do, quite often they'll repeat characters. So an example was Triclops when it came to New Adventures was repeated in the form of Optic. So Optic, if you will, was kind of like the Triclops of New Adventures. And on his back, he'd have a little control knob that you would control and it moves his eyeball back and forth. And he came with multiple eyeballs. Now this, of course, is the classics one. On um, the original toy, the eye did move and only had one eyeball. So you could change it out for a green one or an orange one. So across the internet came this idea is what does Optic look like without his armor? And there was this really cool guy. I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now. He made a lot of really cool custom heads. And his thought was that he was like an octopus alien creature. So he made one that was really cool. And I decided to make one also. I went and found like a little um, Fisher Price type of it was Aquanauts actually toy. I cut the head off, cut a little V shape in there, painted it some really cool colors, um, added a, a peg in there so that I could swap the eyes out if I wanted to or even put another head on there, I guess. And uh, there you go. And I put some clear resin to hold it in place. And uh, that seemed to work pretty well. So this is my unarmored optic. And then he crawls into the armor. Whoop, and then he controls it like a robot. With all these little tentacles coming out to control all the, the things that he does. Now, we also had a Masters of the Universe movie that came out in uh, 1987. And this movie featured... Uh, um, very few characters we knew. It did have a Beast Man and an Evil Lin and He Man and Man at Arms and Tila, but that was pretty much about it. Oh, and the Sorceress that looked completely different as well. But we had some new characters like Blade. And a lot of people wondered was Blade really Triclops? Because he, he's a master of swords, and we saw in the comic that he was a master of swords. He's a swordsman. And so it only makes sense that for some reason they decided to recreate Triclops in this blade. So this is the classic blade version right here. He comes with two swords. And in my mind, he is the movie version of Triclops. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is he the movie version of Triclops or is he just his own character blade and uh, that's it? So let me know. All right. So I think that's all I have. I think I covered everything about Triclops there is. And I forget who asked me to, to put this on here. Um, somebody asked in one of the comments of one of the other videos, my one that shows the Jump Jets Roboto, so they said, hey, can you make a Triclops video? I'm like, eh, why not? So this is my exhaustive Triclops video. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next video. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. And, uh, oh, in case you're wondering, this is the little piece that broke off of my Dragon Blaster armor. I found it on the side. Oop, now I dropped it. I'll have to find it later. Maybe try to glue it back on. So that was that little chunk that snapped off. Urgh. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now. Burp, burp, burp. It's so weird. His eyes are organic. How could that be? How could he have three organic eyes? Oh, anyway. I'll, I'll see you guys next video.